running a little behind and you rode the motorcycle up on the stage so you wouldn't be late? The first time, yeah. But it got such a great reaction, then I did it every night because that was cool. <laughs> That's great. We gotta walk about two blocks, then go up a flight of steps to get to this place. Okay. I tried to explain to them I was an old man. I, they better come and get me early because I might be out of breath by the time I get there. <clears throat> they all think I was joking, but I wasn't. So in prison, I was a celebrity because I played and I sang and I was in all the talent shows and I won all the talent shows and you know, I was the guy, you know, hey, hey, David Allen, what's happening, dude? Hey, man, yeah, hey, I saw your show. It was great, man. I got on the street like I was just a guy who played the guitar and sang, trying to get a job in a bar for $10 a night. You know, that wasn't nothing special about me. So subconsciously, I wanted to go back to prison because I felt more comfortable there. I read a million fucking things about me, but you know something? I never read one goddamn word about me as a songwriter or a fucking singer. I never heard one motherfucker say he writes bad songs or he writes good songs or he's a great singer or he's a fucked up singer. You know what they talk about? He had seven wives. He lived in a cave. He was in prison. He was on death row. He's got tattoos all over his body. He's got his hair in braids. He's got his beard in braids. Fuck that shit. I'm a goddamn songwriter, and I'm a great fucking songwriter. I wrote this old song. goes like this here. Last week, I spent my whole paycheck on whiskey. I know Friday night I'll do it all again. The first time I saw a 45 record with my name on it, I made it. I was a, I was a celebrity, a star, and nothing that could ever happen. All these platinum albums that you see around here and all these gold albums and triple platinum albums, you know, they don't mean as much to me as that first little record that I saw with my name on it. You may be a businessman or some high degree thief. They may call you Doctor Indian Chief. You're gonna have to serve somebody. Serve somebody. It might be the devil. It might be the Lord. I was working at a place called the Argosy. It's a casino boat in Indiana. And um, I told the truth now. Okay. They all talk about me, and they're, they all tell all the girls, "Oh, that guy's an asshole. You know, don't even go near him. You know, he's a jerk." And all that shit. And they told Kimberly the same thing. He kind of had that, you know, sit, you know, pushing those buttons on the slot machine. I mean, he knew what he was doing, you know. So I was sitting there playing a slot machine, and she walked up to me. She had glasses on, just like, looked like a, like a little school teacher, you know. And she said, uh, I understand you're a big asshole. She said, everybody tells me you're an asshole. They were afraid of him. And I'm like, well, I have no fear. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go up and talk to this guy. She said, I just want to know one thing. I looked at her. I didn't say nothing. I just looked at her. She says, do you want cream in your coffee? I went, yeah, that'd be cool. I think I'll do that. And I said, would you like cream in your coffee? <laughs> That's what I said. Now on my fifth divorce, the judge looked at me and he said, you know, David Allen, last time you was here, I told you you had a drinking problem. 
And you told me you didn't have a drinking problem. You just liked the drink, and you didn't give a fuck who liked it. I said, well, sir, nothing much has changed. I still feel the same way. He said, I knew you would say that. So what I've asked your soon-to-be ex-wife to do is to make a tape recording of you coming home drunk. See, the tape sounded like this. Bitch! You motherfucker! Get down here and open the goddamn door! I pay the bills here, you cocksucking motherfucker! I whip your goddamn ass, bitch! It, it, it could have been me. It might have been me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then on the tape, you hear this woman's voice, this little woman's voice saying, Oh, David Allen, just lay down on the porch and go to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. It's just the whiskey talking. I said, Judge, you got a paper and pencil. I want to write that line down about the whiskey talking. See? Because I don't love you. And I don't want you. And I ain't coming home tonight. There's a bar still waiting for me. I can see the neon light. And I don't want to say, I'm sorry, dear, before you let me in. And if I act crazy, you say it's just the whiskey talking for me once again. You can blame it on Jack Daniels. You can blame it on Jim Beam. You can blame it on George Dickel when I get drunk and mean. But don't ask me when I'm coming home. Don't ask me where I've been unless you want to hear the whiskey talking for me Kimberly, once again. This ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not, I didn't say that. This ain't me. on stage and two hours after I get off I'm not <laughs> responsible a friend of mine died this past year his name was Waylon Jennings and on the day that he died I wrote this song I wanted to share it with you here today will you remember me Will you remember me When I'm dead and gone Will you still play my songs Will you remember me I was the guy That could drink you under the table I was always the last one standing When the whiskey was gone I was always ready, willing, and able. Yeah, I knew how to do it right when it came to doing wrong. I had more tattoos. I could drink more booze. I made my living with a guitar and a gun. Yeah, I robbed more banks than Jesse James. I used to be public enemy number one. I was the guy that your parents warned you about. I was everything you wanted to be. And when I was 62, I was asking you if you was going to remember me. Will you remember me? Will you remember me? When my life runs out, that's what I'm talking about. Will you remember me?